Look at this meme that I pulled off the internet. It says, evolution is a theory, not a fact. If it is a fact, please tell me what is the missing link between man and ape. So it's expressing skepticism about the status of evolution, but I'm not as interested in the scientific question here as I am in the way that these terms theory and fact are being used. Now take a look at this quote. This is from an actual evolutionary biologist. It is time for students of the evolutionary process, especially those who have been misquoted and used by the creationists, to state clearly that evolution is a fact, not theory. So it sounds like it's simply claiming the opposite of what's being said in the first quote. Now look at this one. Evolution is a theory. It is also a fact. This is by Stephen Jay Gould, another evolutionary biologist. Uh, Richard Lewontin and Stephen Jay Gould both support the theory of evolution. No one is a bigger defender of evolution than Stephen Jay Gould. Um, but here he describes it as both a theory and a fact. And in this case, it seems like he's not just contradicting the first quote. It seems like he's using the word theory in a different way than it's being used in the first quote and the second quote. These differences in wording are expressing disagreement of some kind. But unfortunately, the disagreement is operating at two different levels, and that's inevitably going to cause some confusion. Between the first and the second, there's clearly a difference of scientific opinion. The first is expressing skepticism about evolution, the second is not. But between the second and the third, something else is going on. It looks like Gould and Lewontin are disagreeing about something, but the difference here is actually about the semantics of our scientific vocabulary, and how they're using the terms fact and theory. So it would be nice if we could straighten out the semantic issues. It would help to clarify a lot of scientific debates if we could agree on a common vocabulary, a common way to interpret terms like theory and fact. And not surprisingly, lots of people try to do this. In fact, there's a small cottage industry devoted to articles and blog posts and YouTube videos that try to do just this. And almost always, the people writing these articles want to intervene in these debates about the scientific status of some subject, like evolution or climate change, by legislating in the proper way to use scientific vocabulary. Usually because they think that the people on the wrong side of the issue are either confused about what these terms actually mean, or are willfully misusing them for rhetorical purposes. I've looked at an awful lot of this vocabulary policing, and I can tell you that most of it is well-meaning, but it's messed up. These vocabulary policing articles routinely say things about the nature of science and scientific terminology that no philosopher or historian of science would ever say. They're routinely either too narrow or too broad in their definitions, and very often they're inconsistent in their usage, defining a term one way and then using the term in a way that contradicts that definition they just gave. So this is the current situation that motivates a course like this, or at least it's one of the motivations. It is important to understand the various ways that scientific terms are used. And knowing this is helpful for understanding what's going on in a scientific debate. I take this to be an important component of science literacy. But the reality is that all of these terms have more than one legitimate usage, more than one legitimate meaning in science. Scientists themselves use these terms in more than one way. So as I'll show as we work our way through the course, this idea that we can legislate a single use for these terms is wrongheaded. It usually does more harm than good. Instead, our goal should be to understand the functions that any given usage serves, to understand the conceptual work that a term or concept is doing in helping us to think clearly about science and scientific reasoning. Let's break this down a little further. These are the objectives of the course, what I want students to be able to do after completing the course. First, I want to make you aware of the variety of meanings of a scientific term. Second, I want to show you how to recognize how a term is being used in a given context. And third, I want to show you how to use this terminology to engage productively in dialogues on scientific issues. So when you're at a dinner party and that subject comes up that your parent or your uncle or your friend likes to raise about the scientific status of some theory, I'd like you to have some tools to help you engage in a genuinely productive conversation. This course will help to give you those tools.